Hey guys, so today I'm just going to show you something. Uh, it's called the Oculus Sample Framework Project. And what I really want to get done with this video is I want you guys to learn how to use the developer documentation for yourselves. Um, so rather than relying on me or anyone else to create a video and kind of walk you through and hold your hand through how to do things, I want you guys to be able to refer back to the actual developer documentation so that you can answer your own questions um, with relative ease. So um, to make it a little easier, uh, let's first start up, and I've already opened this up, uh, developer3.oculus.com slash downloads. And you can see that Oculus has actually provided us with a bevy of different resources. Um, all of these are actually really cool. I'll make a couple of different videos on how to use, um, for example, the lip sync, uh, the voice mod, things like that. But for today, we're going to be focusing on this Oculus Sample Framework for Unity 5 Rift uh, sorry, uh, project. And so just click Details, uh, Agree, and then hit Download. Once you have that done, unzip it. I've already done all that, and I've opened it up. And uh, the one that we're going to talk about right now uh, is in Sample Scenes. Uh, if you go to Input, Input Tester, and open this scene up. And the reason I want you guys to look at this scene is because uh, if we run it, what we actually see is, you can see right here, um, if I move this, uh, you can see all these uh, little strings and these little numbers as well. So as I'm pressing buttons on each of my touch controllers, I can see which of these get activated. And the reason this is useful is because when we want to access input through code, we're actually going to use these primary index trigger, any, um, one, any, Right, so as I'm pressing different buttons, I can see what the actual names of these buttons are inside of uh, the Oculus SDK. And that's super useful. So for example, right now I'm pressing on the right hand's thumbstick, and you can see it's saying, okay, this secondary thumbstick is at 0.4, negative 0.9, and if I press the left hand, then I can see, okay, the primary thumbstick, 0 0.2, 0 point whatever. Uh, if I press uh, the button on the left hand, button on the left hand, button on right, button on right, trigger, grip. Um, so now, right, if I was to, okay, if let's say I'm making a game and I want to see how do I actually access the trigger, right? So what I can do is I can actually go back to this developer center and I can go to the documentation and I can look at, okay, OVR input. That's probably where we're going to find what we're looking for. And if we go down here, um, we can see this thing, example usage, and we can immediately see how we can access all of the buttons that we just saw on the previous screen. So let's say, for example, uh, we want to write a script around button one, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call it uh, input test. I'm going to open it up in Visual Studio. And all I'm going to, and actually in the meantime, while it's opening up, uh, let's, let's wait up a little bit. It's going to take just a second to load here. And there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if, I'm going to copy and paste uh, the line that I had from, from there. And sorry, Visual Studio is just a little slow right now. And what I'm going to do now is I want to say, okay, if I've pressed button one, uh, let's do a debug log. Let's say I've pressed button one, right? So now all I have to do is just make sure that input test is um, anywhere in my scene. So I could have put this, I could have created an empty game object, for example, and I could have put input test there. It doesn't really matter. Now, if I press play and I go to the console and boom, I can see that I've pressed button one, right? So as long as I have it pressed, I'm getting all of these debug logs as I have it pressed down. Um, and now let's go back to the docs, right? So see here, I use this first line, OVR input dot get. I could have just as easily used this second line, dot get down. Now the difference being um, that get will have it as long as, will fire as long as it's held down. So as long as I'm holding it down, get would have fired it. Get down will fire it every time I have pressed it down and then up. So it won't refire unless I unpress and repress. So to see that in action, let's actually press play again, and boom, I'm holding the button down, but it still only says I've pressed button one once. Now, uh, if I unpress and then repress, I get another click, another click, another click. But as long as I'm holding it down, 
I don't have uh, the actual, I don't have it rerunning, running, 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 running. So the point and what I'm trying to get at is that now that you've done, now that you know how to do this for button one, you can do this for any of these buttons, primary thumbstick, secondary index trigger, left index trigger, um, D-pad down, D-pad right, and you should be able to, uh, by process of elimination and using the actual, um, this scene right here, you can actually, since you can see uh, the trigger is primary index trigger, now you can just say, okay, well, now that I know the primary index trigger is the one I want, I can go here and I can say OVR input dot button dot primary index trigger, boom. And now if I hit play again, all I have to do is press that primary index trigger and boom, I've pressed the button. So I hope this video has been helpful. Um, I did want, you know, I, I want, I should hope, I hope that you guys um, are able to figure these things out, but if not, um, I will be doing a more in-depth tutorial on a lot of the other buttons and their common use cases, just like I did uh, for the Vive. Um, so yes, look out for that. And if you have any questions, comments, um, anything else in the documentation that you're not too sure of, feel free to message me or comment uh, and I'll be sure to respond. Thank you.